So hello and welcome to the 13th episode of Nightmare Down Under, where we play the game Gear City on Nightmare Difficulty Down Under in Australia. We started in 1900, now it is July 1929. So last turn, the components for the platform of a short wheelbase car finished, and we can design something new, a compact car. Let's just double check that none of our competitors had the same idea in the meantime. Because then we might switch over to the micro car if none of our competitors had the idea in the meantime. So, nope, there is no compact car uh, here. None in Adelaide, where we have burned all. And none in Perth, where we have Jameson Farewell. Okay, so then we can design compact car, and I suspect it's the one that's more in demand. So the, the other ones, just to double check, okay, sedan, 2 plus 2, Touring, uh, still top 3. Coupe and full-size sedan are there. Phaeton is on its way out, although with an arrow pointing upwards. Pickup truck is hanging in. Roadster, we have a number of them on the market already. Yeah, so compact car is in the next up. We would have the entire market for ourselves. So then let's design a compact car. What do they want? Safety, fuel economy, and dependability. And a little bit of the rest. So fuel economy we took care, took care of through a tiny engine. And we're going to use the three-speed non-synchronous gearbox that's already tried and true. So what I will go for is something like this. So 11.8 has 5, 7, uh, 11.8 fuel consumption has 578 space. 680, so that's larger. And same fuel economy because we are so much below the curve. 586. These are fancy cars, which we're not using. There's a bit of a different style. This is probably a bit too tiny. Yes, yeah, so we're going to use with the... What was that here? Accumulus. So that's our compact car. We, of course, the order of the day is to keep things cheap. So I will slide us to the acceptable minimum. So it's male, maybe it's for young drivers. And it's lower middle class. So market demographic doesn't do anything again. But this is a bit like what the, well, not, not exactly the original Phaeton, more like the original Coupe. So I like reliability, and I certainly we can invest in that. 36, 37. They like a little bit of cargo space. 37, 38, they like safety. 38, 39, they like a little bit of handling. 40. 11 months. I think that's sensible. It doesn't have to be that great, although. Number 412, it doesn't, this, th this doesn't add much. So the testing stuff doesn't add much. Dependability. Now I think if we get competition, then this is what we want. So 11.8 fuel economy, 8 horsepower, 27 newton meters of torque, top speed of 55, and plenty of space. And 11 months. Yeah, so it's the 8. I don't think we had an 8 before. So it's the Australis 8. 11 months, so middle of next year. Oh, there was already one. Okay. The 8 compact. Yeah, I'm not losing too much sleep over names here, to be honest. So next month we're going to get our factory redesigned, so maybe we'll be able to consolidate all our production there. So 
So that's the warning for that. So stuff is reducing our reserves, which as it should be. So finally we have some stable environment here. Have the... So the others have Phaetons, but they're not selling, but they still influence the algorithm for some reason. That's a bit confusing. So we have to keep things consistent, so 736. Sedan 700, 647. It's actually not that much of an improvement that I would have expected. How about, what were the last time around the unit costs? So Sydney had 128, Melbourne had 170, but that's probably due to these slider settings and it just got worse. So we have tons of space in either place, and that rhymes. I think it's simply easier to move the three that we have here over to Melbourne. So six grand coupe, or no, 1,300 grand coupes. One less. 769 sedans. Yeah, we can we can consolidate. And 700 sedan LX. So, all under one roof, and still three lines available. So we have a compact car in 10 months. Let's see what the unit cost, uh, yeah, the a unit costs are in terms of factory production. Okay, sales have picked up slightly for some things, not for others. Pickup truck sales have picked up. Pun not intended. So 600 pickups. Fifteens are good. LX a bit less. 600. Yeah, 650. Touring is good. Grand Coupe 1000 and Phaeton is also fine. So what's the unit cost now in the revamp Melbourne factory? 144. It's not great but we're not using the lines to full extent so it's a bit sort of in between. What are we paying for Sydney just being open or existing but not being open that way around? Mm. That's not too bad. Total cost 100,000 per month. That's certainly uh, not terrible. So, very low sales all of a sudden. What happened? If we look at the date, October 1929, so this might uh, ring a bell. That was the month uh, when the Great Depression started. So a big stock market crash and I think it's probably in the news as well. No, that will be next next month so the newspapers are always a bit behind but we got a memo about it. So economic issues in the news and we we'll see that in the next, next round stock market decline and research is complete. So that means we have a large drop in demand, which we can see here. So over 175 maximum estimated customers for a Phaeton. So the sales figures that we see here are actually the long-term sales figures. Since we have now produced much more than was actually sold, 
we can cut production entirely for a while and then slowly restart it once uh, the reserves dwindle. So let me just check again the unit cost for Melbourne, 145. And here everything goes to zero. And everyone can stay home. Because we have so much produced and no one's buying that we don't need um, any production for a while. Yeah, so very low sales numbers. Cash flow is of course nice because we're just selling but not producing. And we can have a look at the news, the, uh, the great crash on Tuesday, October 29th. So that's uh, what happened. So let's see how we're doing once uh, we need to start producing again. Okay, so the first thing where we need um, production again is the pickup truck. So work vehicles always, always in demand. Your contract requests, did we check what we got? Did we get some? Adelaide Commercial Fleet is a limousine. And Brisbane Taxi Service also, and we don't have limousines, so too bad. So we have the best full-size sedan still, and the, still the best pickup truck. Although it's ancient. New racing series, European mountain climb, but that's far away. And some are competition, but not here. So we have to restart production. Question is where? We have to produce 200-ish pickup trucks. So Melbourne, one line is 340. Sydney, one line is 286. So Sydney is probably better, because we need to pay less for the line being active. And um, this is plenty. So this works. So if we now look at our past unit costs, they are insane since we didn't produce anything. Or, so I think they use one unit uh, to sort of highlight this. And then we can see what the single line that we have open brings in unit costs. All the rest is plenty. And we're not selling that much. Compact car in six. Might actually be sort of a good car for these economic situations. So that's stable. And that's the only thing we needed to do. So Unit cost, yeah, 433, since we have the factory overhead. So new year. We, well, we are vastly outselling the other Phaetons, and that's to be expected because these are insanely expensive. Apeson has now two, two plus two coupes. We're also winning the sales war because we're better but cheaper. Oopsie has a touring which hardly plays a role. There's still the sedan from 1926. We are worse, slightly worse, but cheaper and have the better market presence. And we're the only one having a pickup truck. So new year. What we can check is the company directory. Losses, one page, two pages, two and a half pages with full of losses. Couple who have made huge profits. Apeson is among them. And Hopesy also. So new vehicle type, there is a coupe utility. That's something we should do since we are in Australia after all. There's the hatchback and the compact SUV. 
There's a unibody frame, but we can't uh, design this yet. Um, there is the mid-engine front-wheel drive, which is a bit odd, and uh, there is the electric three. Yeah, who cares about electric? So we need to restart some production. So pickup truck is doing fine. So some 150 sedans. Some 100 tourings. What, 50 tourings? Oh, maybe, yeah, I still have to bite the bullet somehow. Some 150 18s. The 2 plus 2 sales in insanely high numbers. That's 200 Grand Coupés. And that's 300 Phaetons. That's two production lines, actually. So, cash flow is still 1.7 million plus. Compact kind four. Okay, some missed sales, so things are picking up slightly. That's nice. So 15 sedan is still fine. We have huge reserves for that for that one. So 200 tourings. One hundred thirty tourings. Can probably make the top touring a bit cheaper. That we sell a little bit more. 218 sedans. What we should also do is re recondition. that we at least sell a bit more. So 218 sedans. 350 grand coupés, maybe a bit more. That's the second production line. And Phaeton is, is great. Compact car in three months. Cash flow minus 500,000. Cash flow plus 370,000. So things have stabilized. I picked up slightly because that's, I guess, the um, improved branches. So 300 pickups. One hundred eighty fifteen sedans. I can probably keep things as they are, but anyway, one hundred fifteen sedan LX. Fifteen touring is good. Both tourings are good. More eighteen sedans. Grand Coupe is good, and Phaeton is good. Compact car in two. That would be interesting. Because we, we were the only one. I'm not sure whether we, we still will be. Um, but I think it's a car that suits these economic conditions. Okay. So a few less 15 sedans. 
otherwise it's slowly building up reserves and I think this is sensible to do. So what's our unit costs? 200, okay, not great, but uh, I think worse than with, with Melbourne. So how much does Melbourne cost while being idle? Because this seems to stabilize on a very low level. 250,000 per month. That's a lot. Especially since our cash flow is just 635,000. With not that much um, competition. So once they think of something, we're getting even less. So how much... We, we still have tons of production capacity available in Sydney. So what I'm tempted to do is close Melbourne for good. It was just opened. The big grand opening of Melbourne was last last year, but I think that's the, what happened to many companies uh, at that time when everything they knew was up, up, up uh, in terms of sales uh, and internal revenue and profits. So they had to expand to keep up, similar to us. And then we were left with uh, an insane excess production capacity when no one wanted to buy stuff. So let's wait two, month, two more months till the compact car has sold for the for the uh, for one time. So, Phaeton sales dropped. So 270 pickups. Sedan sales also dropped. Um, 120 and 100. That's almost not feasible. Touring is fine. 18 is fine. Grand Coupe also dropped, 200. And Phaeton 160 only. So let's check what happened. Oh, GVO, who is GVO? So they, and they are dirt cheap. So let's check, let's go for Melbourne. Oh, and Ben Short just had a new compact car. Huh? That's great. So that didn't really work. Yeah, so we are selling above manufacturing cost, below unit cost, but that includes the overhead for Melbourne. So that's not that feasible. We have negative cash flow. So that's another indication that we need to close Melbourne. GVO has a grand coupe, which is worse than ours, but um, so we'll just put it onto the same price footing. It's still above manufacturing costs. Touring hasn't changed a thing. And GVO has sedans, which are not that great, but they still, but ours isn't either anymore. And Hopesy has a new sedan too. So what we need to do now is probably revamp our sedan, both both sedans, and then that we can deal with the crowded sedan market. I, suspe I suspect someone has bought another mark. So we need to be cheaper, so above manufacturing costs and above manufacturing costs, and we're the only pickup. So compact, yeah, that's not helpful. And we probably, can we compete? Yeah, we can sort of compete. So with something like this, maybe. So Benchot is Hopesy, so they're in on all markets anyway. So what's rough estimate? Probably too little to be useful. So one line. 
less than one line. Okay, so a compact car is in the works, or is in uh, production rather. What does the press think? At least it it's good, so that's that's one thing. Do they agree with the score? They're taking the compact on the world's greatest roads this weekend, loads of, and loads of tests. It's not overly impressive, but it's adequate for the a general use, so the engine is fine actually. So our 400cc in line 2, that was a good choice to go very, very small. Not good torque, but good perform, good handling. It's neither over luxurious nor bare bones, it's tolerable. It's not exactly roomy, it's a poorly made toy, but it is dependable. And they like the fuel economy, so engine is great, that worked. And the extra effort uh, for safety paid off, so they really like it. So what we need to do now is to take care of our sedans, which are instantly our oldest ones. So what's the platform? It's the 1924 platform, so that so they are still good. That's actually, I think that's the big, that's the first overhaul that they're getting. We can probably put the bigger engine in there. Let's see whether they appreciate that. So the car body will be the same. So this doesn't do anything. Okay, performance is 34. What happens if I put the other engine in? And here the the non-synchronous, which is better engine. Thirty-three, thirty-four. It doesn't really change that much. So fuel consumption here is fourteen point four. I think what we're going to do is we keep the base version base and the LX version more upmarket. So this is fine. Can we keep the body? We're not doing that that much to it. It's the base version anyway. So we can actually reduce things a bit. Now this has 34, that's okay. So then let's keep it at that. Although it's the base version. So then performance is the big compromise, which is okay. So 431. And this has 15.7. Yeah, so the other engine gets better, better mileage. How much more expensive is it? $10, so that's not much. I think what we... Have we already... Yeah, we had made one improvement. And we don't need to make another for this. And... Yeah, this has a little, little effect in terms of modification, so the components can stay as they are. So this is our... Did I make a mistake here? Where's the 33 gone? Hmm. And there's 32 it is. So 32, 32. Okay, 416. The old one was... Okay, the old one was much more expensive, so that's that's helping. Can we push this through in three months? We should. So that's the base sedan. It's the 16. Sixteen 
16 sedan in three months and we there then add one additional trim the 18 with which will overlap with the full size but anyway so 16 sedan new trim bigger engine same gearbox let's call it the LX and because that's what we are used to so it's upper middle gets a bit more attention to performance dependability safety one yes 34 is great can we get it to I think 503 is probably fine on the upper end so 34 Um, maybe if I push things a bit here, 34, doesn't seem to have any effect again, 34, th okay, 34, 34, then let's do that, because I think this is not much of a difference. So 534, the old one was 520, no. Yeah, so cost exactly the same. So the lower end one is cheaper, and this one is the same. More powerful, more fuel economy, etc. etc. So 16 sedan LX, three months. Yeah, so we have a negative cash flow. We have. 14 production lines available in Sydney and 26 in Melbourne, so we don't need Melbourne at all. So what we're going to do is close Melbourne completely. So scrap the factory, uh, no, no, uh, close the factory. So we are saving 262,000 per month and we're going getting a small one-time payment back and I think that's not money we can afford to spend just for nothing and we have plenty of reserve capacity anyway. So, yes, one less factory. There we go. So, sedan in three. Let's see how the compact car does. Probably terrible because we have company. One hundred thirty four. Yeah, so one hundred fifty is realistic. And that's not that useful. How are we s selling actually? above unit costs and they are actually not selling many we're actually selling very well uh, nicely above manufacturing cost and i think that's what we should strive for the rest i think works yeah as good as it can phaeton is still I think the, the Phaeton is maybe an effect of simply the Phaeton becoming unpopular. Well, uh, we want to see what is this GVO. They seem to be extremely cheap, not too bad, but they can't sell anything because they are new. So what's GVO? So we have, this will only show last year, so we have to look at something contemporary. It's, ah, uh, Hopesy bought another mark. So I suspect they will probably clean house at some point. So we now have compact cars. So coupe utility is something we can do and micro car is something we can do because there is no micro car and we have the platform for it. So then is more like the emergency operation. So let's sunset the sedans. So, stop production, and then we still have some 15 sedans left over. Compact car 130.
the rest is selling off reserves, positive cash flow. So that's, I think, all we can hope for. Less 15 tourings. So stop production of both 15 sedans. And put the 15 sedan on clearance. So I hope he has now three sedans and now three marks in the mix. They probably have to start discontinuing stuff at some point. I'd hope so. So research complete. Why did we pay 1.1 million in taxes? Because that's where our cash flow comes, the negative cash flow comes from. Did we pay this on the factory sale? What we scrapped? That could be. It's worth finding out. So reserves slowly dwindling, which is good. Some more grand coupes. Now let's let's wait. I'm keen on keeping our reserves low. So then let's put the two sedans into production. And we need less pickups. So 150, 150 pickups are going to be fine. That sounds like a competition almost. Someone else bring a pickup to the game. So 16 sedan and 16 sedan LX. So the 16 is the 18. So the 16. So it's not bad actually. So we can keep that cheap. And the other one, we sold the other one for 12.44. So we can sell the new one for 1248 because it's better. So the Hopsy Flying Squirrel, which is a funny name, is better and the GVO Crime is a crime because it's great. Okay, so then that's that. Let the, this continue both 15 sedans. was the pickup competition. Yeah, the Apeson-esque and ours is terrible. So let's update our pickup truck. I think it's still on the, yes, yeah, on the new, on the, on the current platform, that's good. And I think it gets the new Synchro Mesh gearbox because it's better. At least it's cheap. We're go going to be cheap. That's important. So some more reliability, some more cargo. Yes, 34. Nice. Performance doesn't really matter. Four months, four months. Everything else doesn't matter. So pickup truck is always very easy. Let's see how they like the new torque. And this should update this thing quite nicely. So it's the 18 pickup now. That's a th it's the same car. Why are we paying 1.1 million in taxes again? On what? Ah, we, we haven't checked the news. So the old 15 sedan is gone. 16 sedan, yeah, sells in 
Pretty dire numbers though, so 100 each is fine. I think that's, that's simply a function of having an insanely crowded market. It's almost not worth it, but I suspect they will probably clear out the market at some point when they clear up um, the stuff from the mark that Hopesy acquired. So some more Grand Coupes, 270. 250. Fine. Can make it more than more expensive. I'm not opening a second production line. Phaeton is good. How less how little demand is there for a Phaeton? 2.9. Yeah, it's dropping. Two hundred thirty fifteen touring. Factory. Okay, rest is good. As good as it can be under these circumstances. So three months for the new pickup truck. One million cash flow, so that's I think a healthy sign. So now that still more grand coupes, or rather a more expensive grand coupe. Again, the issue of the extra production line. Phaeton is fine. Okay, sedan so sales have picked up, so I suspect that's them bringing the house in order. So 150 and 120. What's our unit costs? 273, that's pretty high. Look, we have a positive cash flow, so who's, who's to complain? Pickup truck in two. And that's easy to sunset. So let's check the sedan market where things then have cleared out. So break even. New contract requests, nothing for us. Let's sunset the pickup. Let's make 50. No, let's make zero. That's not worth it. Okay, sedans are good. 200 phaetons. A few less 18s, that's competition. 217 touring. So, sedan. No, it's simply us doing well. They probably had to reorganize, uh, readjust their um, set um, prices, perhaps. We can probably see what, what happened. So that's... So the GVO crime is new. They discontinued these 1936 Lucias. Ah, that, that was the effect. And they so they still have three sedans on the market. Phaeton sales. Yeah, we are sort of leading everything and the rest is just trying. Full sized. Yeah, the Apes and Peak is there. And that lost some sales. Okay. 
So we have some cash reserves, so it's not, not a big deal, but it still makes sense to simply be profitable. 500,000 cash flow, that's fine. So a couple of missed sales for the pickup truck. There's a, going to be a new one now. Rest is, I can make some more grand coupes again. Research complete, yes. No, we can make the grand coupe more expensive. Okay, they are all fine. So let's to put the pickup on the market. 1484 four should be good. Because ours is worse, but also they're much cheaper than the one that exists. That works for me. So the 16 pickup and production. Okay, so we had given the sedan an overhaul, given the pickup an overhaul, we have our compact car, which is sort of selling. We have our Grand Coupe, which, and our big sedan. So they could all probably do with a bit of a makeover. Both Tourings. What we can also do, so let's, since we have the coupe utility, and that's known to be fem uh, Sort after in Australia, yes, 3.6 on average. So that's actually worth worth looking into. Unless, well, even if Hopesy has one, we should also have one. So there is no one yet. Now that's probably the, the next thing that we should do. So let's have a quick, quick look. Um, what the bodies are looking like. I suspect large wheelbase. Big engine is easy, and then the non-synchronous gearbox. Ah, yeah, it's the same bodies as for essentially the same bodies as for the pickup. So, what do we have for our pickup? No, not R and D, but showroom. Nice. So that's the one with a single cabin. So our coupe utility can be the one with a double cabin. The thing is we would put this onto the platform that's now 10 years old. So that doesn't make sense. Is there one on the smaller wheelbase? Simply from the looks of it. So here I am again putting realism over what the game allows me to do. Is this a shorter wheelbase? Not really. It just has more overhangs. So no. This may be, but this is not a car type that we have. So the coupe utility doesn't make sense. Do we have micro cars? So we have compact cars where we owned everything and no micro car. What's the demand for microcars? Point zero five. That's nothing. So the similar, so Lando Lay or hatchback. What are the current sales of those? There is no hatchback. One Lando Lay sold by GVO. What about the others? So that's Sydney. No hatchback. No Lando Lays. Yeah, that's probably due to supply, maybe. So Microcar doesn't look that promising due to very low market numbers. What are other things that are very unpopular? I mean, that we can get a rough idea what things may look like. Mm, station wagon, and I think they have station wagons and town cars. Or a third of compact cars. Station 
Station wagon is so taken together fifty. Town car thirty-three. And this is pretty affordable. So one hundred fifty Yeah, it would be something like eighty micro cars. And that's not really worth doing. So how are we doing here in terms of station wagons? That's probably supply. 25 town cars. Yeah. It's hard to say, but probably not really that much worth it. Had we actually checked the press what they think about our new pickup? No. We had looked at the sedan, right? Yeah. Or not? No, we hadn't. So well, we have some really to catch up on. So sedan, the base version, 16 horsepower, not a good fit for the model. And also subpar in terms of torque. So we need a bigger engine, but that's the base engine. It's good enough for most people on the track. It's not enjoyable, but it's not the worst in terms of interior. Good cargo space. Below average workers in quality, not prone to failure, impressed by the fuel economy, and it's safe. Okay, so that went well. And even 80 horsepower is lackluster, so our next, even our next medium engine needs to be larger, so the large engine probably even, even more so. That's a good, good info. I love the handling. It meets what you need in terms of comfort, decent cargo space, extra work in terms of finish, again not prone to failure, very good fuel economy, I think still there's this oddity that the larger engine has a better fuel economy, and uh, not the best for safety, but better than a lot of others. All right, pickup. So yeah, it's engine is definitely too slow. Average in terms of torque, so that's nice. Above average in terms of handling. Bare necessities in terms of interior. Not exactly roomy. And that's already having a pretty big bed. It's poorly made, but it's a reliable. They love the fuel economy and bare minimum to safety, so not bad at all. So we're still making a positive cash flow, so that's good. So have a look at the companies, who is still making a profit, or how many are not. Three pages, four pages, so four pages, four and a half pages full of companies not making a profit. We have a few who make, who do, but that's few and far between. Where is our competition actually? So. Hopsy is, okay, they, they just bought GVO, so that's where these big uh, losses come from, so it's hard to say how they actually did. How large are they now with two marks? They are the, now the fifth largest car manufacturer. Wow. That's what cash can buy you. Then we have Apeson, who have a good good reserves, but not good profits, so they will probably make it through. Jameson Farewell, they probably might have bought the mark, so that's where the negative profits come from. And we have it's still burnt all, still exists, and they also have I think some some nice reserves. So who's in the danger of going under? Oh a couple. So Espanol Sizer is gone. Giano's probably gone. Gordon Brule, yeah, so those are going to have some trouble. What did we actually make? 10 million profit. How's, th how's that in 1930? So we are actually here. Uh, top 10. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yes, top 10 in terms of profitability. That may include the one-time sell-off of the factory, but we also paid taxes for that, I suspect. How are we in terms of actual sales? 20,000. We are still up there on the second page. So I think overall we're hanging in there quite nicely. 
So if we look at the so profit loss statement, here we see the big surge where our competition dropped the ball a bit. And then, uh, but we didn't make a loss so far. And we can make things work even with our current low production. Pretty high unit costs due to the under underutilization of the factory. But as long as the numbers are in the black, I'm not going to be complaining. Pension funds, does it still live? Not really. I'm going to fill it up again. Because things are probably just going to look up. And then we can profit from the boom. Okay, so now is the big question what to do next. Um, make a coupe utility on an aging platform. Make a micro car for a market that may not exist. Or simply give our existing vehicles an overhaul. So that's all things to be decided in the next episode. See you there.